to understand why there's helium production up in the Babbitt area, you have to understand this map here, this geology map, and this is the darkly outlined area is where the continent started to tear apart the North American continent. This happened about a billion years ago, so a long time geologically speaking. The uh, the purple are areas are volcanic, uh, basically they were, would have been volcanic islands, chains of islands in an ocean of some type, not a very wide ocean. The green area is what they'd call the uh, basin area relative to the uh, the purple. That's where the ocean obviously filled in the low area of the basin adjacent to these volcanic islands. And the reason why the green area is there is because the volcanoes, that's made out of, it's not made out of continental crust, it's made out of basalt, a slightly heavier rock than the continental crust, which would be the surrounding areas. So it actually kind of sinks into the earth a little bit. Even though the earth is, the continent is dividing, these these uh, volcanoes, chains of volcanoes are actually causing a little bit of depression parallel with their, their chain. So over the course of time, water fills in there. You get sediments fill in over the course of time. Blue-green algae, which is about the only thing life-wise going on earth a billion years ago. That fills in with the sediments. And, by the way, blue-green algae, that's what makes oil and gas. It, it bakes under pressure and heat over the course of time. And most of your uh, oil and natural gas deposits are, have nothing to do with dinosaurs. It's, it's decomposed blue-green algae. But uh, So all this green area, potentially it could be produce oil or gas, more likely gas because this this stuff's actually down in the ground quite a ways. I mean, you're talking a mile or two or more. So, and it's currently not feasible to drill for it, profitable. Just the drilling expenses, to even explore for it would be prohibitive if it exists. But, uh, so how did they generate this map? Well, they flew a plane over, did some kind of, you know, grid pattern. But the plane would actually detect gravity anomalies. So, you know, if you're here, you're lighter. If you're over here, all of a sudden you're heavier, or lighter, I should say. Purple area would be heavier again, probably a percentage, heavier, not a percentage, but a, a part of a percentage heavier. So very sensitive equipment. Uh, they really can't tell exactly what the rock is below us. So, I mean, this is based on speculation, but so you'd actually have to drill down to actually see this is, you know, volcanic rock, but up and around Taylor's Falls, this is uh, there's a, some of this purple is exposed. It's the basalt, o oceanic crust basalt. It's exposed at the surface at uh, in Taylor's Falls up along the North Shore. It's exposed. So I, I kind of know that because where it's exposed, they get the you know the much higher gravity readings. They you know speculate, obviously if they get the high readings down here, even though they hadn't drilled to it or can't really see it, that's, they know it's there because they can detect the higher readings, gravity readings. So, and again, this is all, none of this stuff, most of it's probably never been drilled. I mean, there are obviously water wells in and around Minnesota that go quite deep, but this stuff's much deeper than that. So this is all kind of speculated on what they, see relative to where it comes close to the surface where you can actually see it at the surface or it can be drilled down to if it's close enough to drill down to but most of this stuff is quite deep so this is all you know just based on a a plane flying over with very sensitive gravity equipment it can kind of tell you what's generally what's there for rock this is this area up here is a little different this is called uh intrusive rock it's not volcanic. It's somewhat like it, but it's actually it pushes slower to the surface. It's a much uh, slower uh, push to the surface, and they can tell intrusive from volcanic by the grains of the size or 
grain size inside the rocks. So this is this volcanic usually means rocks or lava pushed up quickly, cold quickly. So you get very small crystals inside the rock. This intrusive rock has larger crystals. Means it took much longer to cool. So this uh, this is similar to the volcanic material, but it really wasn't like lava flows or anything. It was just a very slow push up to the surface. And that's one reason we're seeing production up here in helium because the sediments that were here likely contained organics. They may have been, been pushed closer to the surface. Also, maybe even been rolled over a little bit, trapped underneath this uh, intrusive rock. And then uh, that intrusive rock might be quite uh, dense and not very porous, so it actually trapped some amount of natural gas, helium underneath of it, right at the uh, boundary here. So that's probably one reason it's uh, we got helium and assume some level of natural gas associated with it, maybe carbon dioxide. I'm not all sure what they didn't really specify what other gases were with the helium, but that's my speculation because helium is 100% associated with natural gas. So there had to have been nat some level of natural gas, I guess, unless you know they rewrite the you know geology books on helium discoveries but 100 percent associated with uh, natural gas so there's obviously some level of uh, natural gas in this area and again these green areas would probably produce natural gas potentially uh, So quickly to go over this one more time, the blue dotted line down here that represents the cross section of the green and purple area. So you have in the center here volcanoes, actually a chain of volcanoes. This is purple area would be would have been a chain of volcanoes in a shallow ocean a billion years ago. Because the uh, basalt is heavier than continental crust or the rock below it, it actually sinks a little bit and it pulls down the uh, surrounding mantle with it a little bit so you get these basin areas immediately parallel with the uh, volcanic islands so this is actually would have been a depression and actually because it's a depression you get ocean water flooding in there and at some point sediments from the surrounding crust and uh, pouring down on the volcanoes it'll uh, this area will the basin area parallel to the uh, volcanic islands, it'll actually start to fill with sediments. And guess what? What's living in the ocean at that point in time? It's blue green algae. And that blue green algae dies, settles to the bottom, it gets trapped in inside the sediments as the sediments settle. So you got sediments with blue green algae. And again, blue green algae is what is constitutes oil and natural gas once it's baked for a while in the ground that's what you get and the longer it bakes the more chance it's uh, natural gas not oil because natural gas is a simpler molecule than you know, the complicated hydrocarbons with inside oil uh, longer chain molecules hydrocarbon molecules anyways so this is basically the sediments here trapped blue green algae and again that would have been probably up in this area the green area would have extended up in this area but either got rolled over by the uh, intrusive rock or pushed up so far it eroded off the surface it was no longer a basin it was a higher area, so you got erosion not uh, deposition so and again my my thought is this is speculation that this cap rock this intrusive actually on the peripheries here actually roll over some of this green area which would have been some of the billion year old sediments with blue green algae so that would be the natural gas production would have been the uh, the green area but not really 
represented on this map. Probably gets too complicated to have green and purple and pink. But uh, so get right at the periphery. Probably have some intrusive going over the top of this blue green. And again, the intrusive, the important part, of it, most important part of it is actually it pushed. Uh, this green material closer to the surface also capped it probably at the peripheries so because this is a this pink area is a slope the rock was a slow push to the surface unlike the volcanoes which were a rapid push and so there you got it that's probably getting some level of uh, entrapment of a uh, Billion year old sediment below this uh, intrusive rock and, the, and sediments obviously to some level had organics in it, the blue green algae which now is likely natural gas this is from Wikipedia it tells us all commercial helium is recovered from natural gas so you do need natural gas to have helium so it can be very tiny minuscule portions of the natural gas component or it can be as high as 10 percent i think up in babbitt they said 12 percent which is super high so it's a very highly concentrated helium relative to the natural gas or whatever else gases are mixed in with the uh, helium they didn't really specify the uh, gases they found with the helium but assume some of it is helium. I'm mean, not helium, but natural gas. This is probably more geology than you want. And I'm a bit shaky on what these terms actually mean. Contact type nickel, copper, nah. PGE stands for platinum group elements like platinum, palladium, rhodium, ro but uh, I believe contact in this term I'll refer to there's some level of uh, ore concentration because of volcanism so it's actually the uh, the ores would be concentrated in these areas and obviously with the red stars I'm going to assume that's stuff they actually drilled down to so they absolutely know, know it's there or either drill down to or at the surface same with the black stars and uh, obviously native copper up in Michigan you actually can get flow copper they call it or copper that's actually stripped off the uh, bedrock up there um, don't know what this term means iron I believe that's titanium palladium I don't know but this another uh, probably concentrated ore up here again this is originally what they were looking at was they drilled down looking for basically rock that would contain concentrated copper in the form of uh, copper sulfate whatever um, but then they discovered the helium so that's up in this area and again you can do your own research uh, I'm shaky on what all this exactly means just I'm gonna go with these are ores that have been concentrated through volcanism so you actually it's uh even though you'd probably find it in here in this rock somehow it was concentrated here so anyways um like i said i'm not a geologist so uh do your own, own, own homework you'll probably find some interesting things and you can always put stuff in the comments section because i'm learning this stuff myself as i go so it's uh you can go quite deep into the uh science of this stuff so i'm just hitting the very very surface of this stuff science wise but just to give you a little bit of an understanding what's going on geology wise so i don't know i probably should call it a wrap but there you go do your own research there's i gave you some start points so look up mid continental rift uh then look up the rocks associated with that and then uh like i say if you learned something put it in the comments section because i'm learning this material too so even though there's obviously up here there's says there's nickel copper uh, platinum group elements in this Babbitt deposit yellow star 
I just don't see there being a lot of political will to mine this area. Again, mining can be very uh, have a very large impact on the environment, especially for groundwater. It can be contaminate groundwater, which is an issue. Um, so there's political will there for mining this area, even if it's a concentrated ore deposit. Not likely to fly. I wouldn't give it a huge chance, but. You know, helium, drilling for helium, and I assume there's some natural gas with it. No oil, probably no oil. Um, much cleaner, very much less chance of environmental impact or a large environmental impact. So that's more uh, likely to happen. I see that as uh, getting the okay at some point. Nickel mining, I went, uh, even if they knew it was commercially uh, viable uh, in a big way. I just don't think the political will there is. There's no political will to actually push forward with mining in that area. But, anyways, those are my thoughts. Alright, leave comments on the video. Thank you.